Welcome. 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 Good to see you. <laughs> you can. Okay. Hiya. <laughs> it's not a good idea, this bicycle. <laughs> Well, to, to, today um, we're moving on to the next of our gifts in the kind of list that we've, we've been working through, uh, the Prophet. And um, so when, 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 we, when we speak about the Prophet, you know, what, what kind of things come to mind when you think of the word Prophet?
you are great and you are good. You are faithful, you are able, you are here. Lord, we, we're glad today to be all together in your presence together. And Lord, we believe that you are here. Lord, I pray that you would breathe out your spirit on us this morning as we gather, make us more aware of your presence, more aware of your love, more aware of your power, more aware of your grace, which is enough. Lord, whatever this week's been like for us, whatever this day has been like so far, for us. May we know that you are here. Whatever the things we're excited about, whatever burdens or weights we carry, may we know that you are here. Whatever questions in our minds, whatever feelings in our hearts, May we know that you are here and that you are enough. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus.
if you're able to, to come along and to be part of that on Wednesday, four till six. And um, yeah, there'll be there's a few other things in there as well, but you can read them in your own time or during the sermon or something. Um, okay, George. George. Mm. Now time to wake up. So, we're going to sing a song, it's incredible. So, it's all about superheroes and different things and how they've got powers and um, different things, different strengths, like prophets and apostles and that, all the different strengths. So, we can't, we can't do this sitting down with that there, Caleb. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What have we got to do? Do the actions, right, okay. But how do you do the actions? Do the same. Do the same. Have they sit down or stand up? Down. <laughs> sit down or stand up? Sit down and stand up. Hey, stand up. <laughs> hey. You're an old man, you're not able to stand up. Okay. Hey, so the actions will be up here. Up my fist, no lasers in my eyeballs, no x-rays, death rays in my fingertips. I am incredible, not always sensible, I'm fairly bendable, just not too edible. I am incredible, my world's immeasurable, I have a pricelessness to God. No good at getting airborne, I just barely flop, explode with a great plot. Bad in tights, but God says I'm amazing. And in me, did He put all that He needs for me to serve Him faithfully? I am incredible, not always sensible. I'm fairly vulnerable, just not too edible. Yeah, I am incredible. My words are measurable. I have a pricelessness to God. I am incredible. Daniel says he's an old man, he can't bend down. 
Okay, so you want to do count and see for me? Can you do the action, ready? Lord Jesus, you are incredible, Lord. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring for us. Thank you for being a friend. And Lord Jesus, just help us to learn something new and just be with you. In Jesus' name, seek. Amen. Okay. okay. The children are going to leave there. Wait for it, Daniel. Wait at the door. It's a hard life. Well, while well, well, the children are leaving, we're going to play a little game. Yeah. Okay, it's going, to, it's, going to, it's going to be up on the screen. Dingbats! Bible dingbats! Alright, you've played dingbats before. There's a picture, you've got to try and figure out what the message is or what it's trying to say, what it's trying to communicate. Alright, so, but first one. As soon, soon as you think you know it, shout it out and we'll see who the, who the winner is. We'll, we'll make it a bit of a competition actually. So we'll make it. The, this side, the prize is the joy of beating the other team. <laughs> the, the, this side of the room versus this side of the room. Okay. Alright. So, here we go. First one. Daily Daily. Oh, that was pretty close. I'll, I'll give it to you, Bob. Well done. Ready? Next one. Wise man over here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would just be one why. <laughs> Mixed messages. Covenant. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Any more? It's all. That's all. Well done. I, I think this side of the winners for that. So. <laughs> your, your prize is a free cup of tea or coffee after the service. <laughs>
please take your seats and let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for the words of that song, for the sacrifice that you made, for the freedom that we can know, for the ongoing work of the Spirit of God in our lives that we can experience. Lord, in these moments now as we come to look at your word, Lord, we thank you for it. And we pray that as you speak to us through your word, you would give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God wants to say to each one of us. For we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we've already been sharing a little bit today about what, what comes to mind when you think about the prophet. Lot, lots of good ideas there. But what, one of the things that came to mind this week when, when I was thinking about it was the, the, the pointer dog. Have you seen those on TV? So sometimes in kind of cartoons and things where um, you know there's a, a hunter like Elmer Fudd or someone like that looking for something and the dog goes on ahead and when they find what they're looking for whether it's Bugs Bunny or you know something else. The, the dog has a way of standing that points in the direction that the thing is that they're looking for is. Uh, and I, I remember watching Mickey Mouse and Pluto, and Pluto did that sometimes, you know, when they're out looking for something every now and then. And I don't know if he's a pointer dog or if he's just very flexible. Um, <laughs> but, but that way of standing that just points and says, there, there it is, that thing that you're looking for, whatever it is you're looking for, there it is, there, over there, over there, over there. You know, that pheasant or that rabbit or that whatever it is. Pew! There it is. When, when, when it comes to the, the prophets in the Bible, that's, that, that, that's kind of what they do for us all along. Even today, it is, is that ministry of pew! There it is. There it is. Look, look, look. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> Pointing the way back to God. In the body, you know, we're, we're looking at this passage from Ephesians chapter 4 that Jesus Christ himself gave some to be apostles, gave some to be prophets, he gave some to be evangelists, he gave some to be shepherds, he gave some to be teachers. In the body, the role, the voice of the prophet is to point us back to God. Right? You, you, you see that with the prophets in the Bible. Thus saith the Lord. That's a fancy way of saying, there he is, look, look. This is what he's doing. This is what he's got to say. Why? why? Why is that something that's worth paying attention to? <clears throat> you know, we're down here living our lives, doing our thing. God's up there doing his thing, whatever he does, you know, from Monday to Saturday. Why, why is that worth paying attention to? That, that, that God is still there, that God is doing something, that God may have something to say to us. Well, well the first thing is that we, we're part of the body of Christ, right? There, there, there's a relationship there that, that has been established between us and between God. There's a relationship. There, there's a beautiful phrase that, that comes up over and over again. Um, in the Old Testament in particular, this phrase, I will be their God. And they will be my people. Or I will be your God. And you will be my people. I, I, I love that, that. That expression of desire. That expression of what, wanting intimacy. That expression of wanting to journey. Not, not just for it to be a one time thing. A one night stand. But, but, but actually. I, I, I want this to mean something. I want this to last. I want this to go the distance. I will be your God. And you will be my people. What do you think about that? The people of God say, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds great. <laughs> For a little while. But back in Genesis, the, this relationship is established. God reaches out to a family and invites his family into a relationship with him. We, we read about it in Genesis 12. Let, let, let's read it together, shall we? Keep you awake. Uh, Genesis 12, verses 1 to 3. The Lord had said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. This is an invitation into a relationship. God is going to this family uh, and uttering those words in different words. I will be your God and you will be my people. Uh, and the beautiful thing now is that we are part of it too, right? We're, we're not necessarily part of Abraham's family. Hands up if you're Jewish. Anybody? No? Which means we're Gentiles. Uh -huh. Right? We're, we're, we're not Jewish. The invitation was to that family, but the invitation has now been opened up so we can all be part of it. I am. Um, go. Uh, Go, go, go a friend who used to pastor a church in Chicago, uh, and the church was called The Table. And what, one of their values at this church, The Table, was that, is, that there, there is always room at the table. I love that idea. There's always room at the table. They're, they're, this isn't a closed family, this is open, there's always space. You come, come and join us, come and sit at the table. We, we are all invited now. Come and sit at the table. Join this family. Come into this relationship. Now, we, we, relationships are kind of the topic of the day at the moment, aren't they? Valentine's Day coming up on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Anyone got any plans? No? <laughs> <laughs> But there, there, there are things that you need to do if you're part of a relationship, aren't you? To, to, to nurture it, to grow it, to invest in it. Uh, and uh, there, there, there are things that come to mind when, when I think about this relationship with God that, that we've been invited into. Uh, and the first thing is this, that God speaks. Right? This is why this prophet role in the church is so important. God speaks. Hands up if you have any kind of a relationship with anybody. Most of us, that's good. <laughs> Hands up if as part of that relationship, you speak to them from time to time. That's good to know. <laughs> God speaks. I mean, we, we see that right back in the beginning, right? In creation, God speaks the world into being, right? So we know that God speaks. God said, let there be light, and there was. God said, let this happen. We know that he speaks, but we also know that he speaks to us. So if you go to the complete opposite end of the Bible, into Revelation, we, we have this whole picture, this whole scene, this whole story, where God is speaking a message to John, that he wanted John to pass on to the church. God speaks. I love the story in Kings, um, in, in First Kings, where we're going to uh, bring it up on the screen if we can read it together. There he went into a cave and spent the night. The story of Elijah, to keep, keep going there. So Elijah's done a run, right? So so came too much. He, he needs a bit of time out. Finds a cave and he goes into the cave, 
spent the night, and the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? God speaks to Elijah. What are you doing here? He replied, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars and put your prophets to death with the sword. Just to say, if you do admit to being a prophet, you know, it won't necessarily be the same. I am the only one left and now they're trying to kill me too. So God, God, given everything to this, I've been passionate and I've done everything that you've told me to do and nothing has worked. Everyone's rejected it. Everyone's been killed. I'm the only one left and now they're coming after me. The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. <clears throat> After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And these are all the kind of pictures that we get in Genesis and Revelation, right? Imagine, let there be light. It's not just a gentle afterthought. That has a booming voice into the darkness and chaos of the world, the universe. Right? In Revelation, read, read it. Revelation chapter 1. Like, it, it's big, it's powerful, it's loud. But after the fire came a gentle whisper. No. After the fire came a gentle whisper. And the voice of the Lord was in that gentle whisper. God speaks. Not only does God speak, but God speaks to us. To all of us, right? In, in different ways and at different times for different reasons, God speaks to us. You, you may have seen on the news that um, Volodymyr Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, was in the UK this past week. Right. And, and, um, and he had a speech to share. And so he came to share this speech, and as he did, politics stopped. The media all pointed their cameras towards him and switched on their microphones to see what he had to say. There, there are some people that you just want to listen to, right? So, some people that you, you, you may not know them, you just know of them, but you'll stop doing what you're doing in order to hear what they have to say. You know, lot, lots of people for many years at Christmas have, you know, carved out time. Three o'clock, what happens at three o'clock on Christmas Day? The monarch speech, right? And, and, and lot, lots of people don't. But lots of people do, you know, set an alarm, make sure that dinner's all cleaned up and tidied away so that they can sit down, put on the TV and pay attention. Because somebody's speaking that they want to hear what that person has to say. I, I've got friends that I meet with sometimes, mentors that I'll sit down and have coffee with that, that, that I, I, I just want to sit and listen to hear what they have to say. God speaks messages, instructions, intimacy. I wonder sometimes how quick or how keen are we to tune in and to listen to what he has to say. I'd like to be a bit more keen and a bit quicker. This past year, 
so some of you might know I, I've been on a course, training course, um, lear learning to be a coach, kind of life coach, leadership coach. And what, one of the things that I learned about myself, one of the very first things that I learned about myself a year ago, roughly to the day, is that I am a really bad listener. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> Like, like really, I just get distracted so easily. Find it so difficult sometimes just to stay focused and concentrate on what you're saying without, um, you know, just kind of beginning to gaze into your eyes and lose your words. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, and hopefully I'm, I'm a year later into this course I'm a little bit better at listening. But I learned that I'm a really bad listener. In, in Exodus chapter 3, God appears to Moses, right? Uh, and, and he says lots of things, but one of the things that, that he says to Moses is this, I have seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out. Or, I have heard the cries of my people. God hears, God listens, God knows what's going on. God, God speaks, but when we come to him and speak, he, he lends us his ear, he pays attention. Uh, and I, I mean, this, this, is, this is God saying that he listens and he hears, right? But, but you also see it through the Bible that that, that that's people's experience as well. Psalm 116, the, the first couple of verses of Psalm 116, we, we see that as well. I love the Lord, the psalmist says, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. They, this is his experience. This is not just his belief. It's not just, you know, I'm saying this and God is everywhere, and so he probably did hear me. This is his experience, that he has experienced the listening ear of God when he's cried out to him. God says that he hears, but also people confirm it time and time again, that he hears us, he hears what he has to say. God hears the cries of your heart. God hears the joy and the celebration and the heartache and the frustration. God hears it. God hears your prayers, your desires, your longings, those things that you really desperately want him to do. God hears all those things and he responds to all of those things as well. God speaks, but God also listens. This is relevant because as part of this whole conversation God has a plan God speaks, God listens God has a plan a friend of mine I was chatting to him recently and, uh, and, and <laughs> we were talking about holidays and he really surprised me he, he said my favourite kind of holiday is to get on a plane and go somewhere and turn up with no plans, nowhere to stay, nothing organised, just get off the plane and then figure it all out when I get there. Anyone else fancy that kind of a holiday? <laughs> yeah. Wait, 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 if I know the place, I might be able to handle it, but if I don't know the place and it's a brand new place, then, then, then that, that wouldn't sit well with me at all. Um, maybe, maybe you can take me and show, show me how it's done, David. See, I, I, I need to have a plan, even if it's just a loose plan. Right? At the very least, I need to know where I'm going to be staying that night. Um, his logic is, well, if I don't find somewhere to stay, there's always, you know, an alleyway or a doorway or something. <laughs> How many doorways have you slept in? Intentionally. Yeah, yeah. I'm just finding that 
I went to a small plan. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need to have a plan, I need to do my research, right? But God has a plan. Jeremiah 29 11, we could probably recite that off by heart, right? Many of us. Well, what does Jeremiah 29 11 say? For I know. Thanks. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, right? He says it then, I have plans for you. I have a plan. Psalm 139. For I knit you together in your mother's womb. I praise you because I am faithfully and wonderfully made. You were planned. Might not seem like it sometimes. But it might not feel like it sometimes. But you were planned. God had a plan in mind when he made you. When he brought you into being, God had a plan. But back to Genesis chapter 12. We've read it before. Leave your home. Leave your father's house. Leave all of these things. All your comfort and, and everything. And go to where? Remember? No, 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 no. No, okay. Go to where? What did he say to Abraham? Go to the place that I will show you. Right? God's got a plan. Now, in this story, he's not telling Abraham what the plan is yet. Or at least he's not telling all of it. You know, he'll do that when Abraham needs to know. But there's a plan. Go. And I'll, I'll show you where you need to go. I'll tell you when you need to know. If you want to know what the plan is, and if you want to know your part in the plan, you need to go to the artist, the architect, and ask him. Speak to him. And let him speak to you. So sometimes we can run away with our own ideas as well intentioned as they might be. Sometimes we can get distracted. Ooh, squirrel. Yeah. The, the prophet within the body points us back to God. Because God listens, God speaks, God has a plan. So the prophet in the body says, oh, well, what does God have to say about that? What's he doing? What's he saying? Because we're his body, we're his church. And we want to do what he wants us to do. So, so we ask and let him speak. While, while the apostle, we spoke about the apostle last week, calls us to keep moving, the prophet calls us to listen to what God has to say and to be obedient to that. Pro prophets are often engaged with and passionate about things like social justice. Because God is a God of justice, right? And that's something that they believe and they embody in being faithful and obedient to God. Prophets are often creative, thoughtful, mysterious, reflective, agitators, questioners, challengers, you know, the guys on the street asking you to sign that petition against one cause or another. Because God's a bit like that sometimes too, right? Jesus is a bit like that. He turns over the tables. We, we, we've in the past talking about, talked about the kingdom of God as the upside down kingdom. Because sometimes it just doesn't make sense with the way that we would do things or the things that... You know, the way that we would understand things, but that God's ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. The, the prophetic voice in the body. And, and don't, don't get distracted with, uh, often when we think of prophets, we think of people that tell the future. Right? The mysterious people. Sometimes that happens. But the, the prophetic voice, the prophet, is the guardian of the covenant relationship between God and his people. They are people that seek to model that themselves. 
and call the rest of us to do that as well. God, God has called us into relationship. It's a beautiful thing, right? To be in intimate relationship with the one who spoke creation into being. And even now, God speaks to us. God listens to us and hears what we have to say. But above all of that, God has a plan. So how, how do we hear from God? Well, we hear from God as part of the family. Right? God, God has given us all gifts. God has given us all different voices. And we all speak into the family with love. We all have a different instinct, a different focus, a different things that comes more naturally. But together, we help to reflect and bring about the fullness of the image of Jesus. Right? We, we hear from God in the Bible and God's Word. So let, let's make sure that we're reading it, digging into it, taking time to listen to God through it. We hear from God in prayer and worship as we open ourselves up to offer Him our praise and receive from Him. Uh, we're going to take a few minutes just now to do that. We're going to sing a few songs. Uh, uh, yeah, feel free to sing along. Feel free to take a moment just to, to pray and to reflect. Um, it's time with God, the God that loves us, the God who says, I am your God and you're my people. It's time to, to worship in his presence or to rest in his presence. Um, maybe time to speak to God. Or time to be quiet and allow God to speak to you.
go to the last one.
spend more time with you. And Lord, we, we, we don't ask that so that we might get fuller and fatter. Lord, we, we ask that so that we might have more to give, more to offer, and more to share. So Lord, fill us, yes, but also use us to establish and to extend <coughs> your kingdom. <coughs> Help us to stay connected, well connected to the source of the world. <coughs> River of life to the one who says, I am your God.